As you're moving your workloads from on-prem to Azure, you still need the same level of enterprise-grade load balancing, application security, and monitoring features. At the same time, you do not want to give up on the cloud-native automation, the flexibility, and the scalability that Azure provides. That's where Avi Vantage comes in. Avi Vantage provides enterprise-grade application delivery, load balancing, security, and monitoring solutions with cloud-native automation that's built in. You get the same as-a-service experience with enterprise-grade features. So it's a win-win, as I call it. In addition, you get real-time monitoring and analytics that no other solution provides today. And Avi is the only true multi-cloud solution that you can use it in Azure, as well as on-prem, and maybe even other public clouds, with a consistent set of features, capabilities, functionalities, and centralized management. Let's focus on the enterprise-grade features. Uh, Avi is a full-featured load balancing solution that provides layer seven, layer four load balancing, global server load balancing, content switching, caching, compression, and auto scaling. Something that you can find only in public cloud, it's available both in public cloud and on-prem. Avi is a full featured security solution from web application firewall to SSL offload, DDoS detection and mitigation, layer seven and layer four policies, and even micro segmentation in container environments. These are the features that you're used to in your load balancers or security solutions. But on top of that, Avi provides real-time application and network performance monitoring with security insights, with log analytics, with application-level health score that's available to you as an integrated solution, not a separate product, not a, any agents that you have to deploy. And finally, Avi is a truly centralized uh, platform with centralized management, 100% REST APIs with automation that's built in out of the box, with self-service capabilities and multi-tenancy that's built in. Let's now focus on how Avi disrupted the market with the next generation application delivery solution. What Avi did was it fundamentally built a new architecture. If you look at a traditional load balancer appliances, you deploy them as active standby pairs. If you look under the hood, uh, there is a control slash management plane, and then there's a data plane all built in into single monolithic appliance. Uh, Avi completely changed that by having centralized control and management plane into what we call Avi controller and a distributed data plane, what we call Avi service engines. The controller is the brain of the system. That's where all the policy resides. That's where all the, that's where all the decisions are made about um, where to spin up another load balancer, uh, where to place a VIP, when to scale out, when to scale in, to do auto healing of the load balancers or the service engines. That's a single REST API endpoint where all the automation is built on top of. The service engines, the data plane engines, is where all the load balancing happens, all the SSL processing happens. Uh, and these are lightweight, stateless service engines that can uh, do very high performance load balancing functionality. So that's the first thing that we do differently. The second thing that we did differently was uh, universal applicability. The same service engine can be deployed as a bare metal server, as a VM, as a Docker container, on-prem, or any public cloud, Azure, AWS, Google, and so on. It's a software solution, which means it can be packaged in different form factor, but you get the same level of features and capabilities regardless of where your workloads are running, all centrally managed by Avi controller. In addition to doing load balancing, because these service engines sit in line with the traffic, it's a very strategic location, by the way, um, they see all the traffic that's going through them and they collect hundreds of logs and metrics every minute. Massage it, push it up to the controller, and then controller not only gives you a pretty dashboard, but also uses that information to make automated changes, such as auto-scaling, auto-healing, and so on. And the controller does this automation by integrating out of the box with orchestration solutions, such as VMware vCenter, uh, or OpenStack, or OpenShift in Kubernetes, or public cloud APIs from Amazon EC2 to Azure and so on. And it does that out of the box. And finally, a common misperception is that you need dedicated hardware for high performance. Well, that's absolutely not the case. Avi is a very high performance software load balancer. I'll give you an example. A single vCPU, a single core of processor can do over five gig of raw throughput, a gig of encrypted SSL throughput, and 2,500 to 3,000 SSL TPS. And it can horizontally scale out to millions of SSL TPS and terabits of throughput. Let's understand how Avi integrates with Azure to provide the level of automation, elasticity, and flexibility 
in Azure environments. AV controller is the central brain of the system that integrates with various Azure components from VNets to resource groups to Azure DNS and scale sets to IAM roles and provides a true cloud native automation for your workloads. Let's um, look at the demo, but before we do that, let's understand the before and the after experience. Today, for example, for enterprise grid features, if you consider deploying a legacy vendor's load balancing solution, a virtual edition of a legacy vendor, um, let's look at the workflow that you have to go through. Uh, a user files a ticket for a load balancer, and then you as a network admin, you go in and you manually do the following steps. You first provision the appliance VM. You maybe spin up a second one for HA. You connect the VMIX to the right port groups or the right networks in Azure to make sure that the, the connectivity is established. Uh, then you decide you place a virtual service or a VIP on the right set of load balancers to make sure the capacity is handled. Uh, you give it an IP address through IPAM. You publish it, that entry in the DNS. And then you maybe in install extra tools for monitoring the performance. And then you have to decide when to scale these load balancers out or scale the applications out, all of that manually. It might take days or even weeks for you to bring your application up with the load balancer in front of it. Compare that experience to what Avi does. There's an easy button, uh, either through a single API or a click of a UI. If the application ad admin himself or herself or you as a network admin can basically click that button and Avi controller takes care of everything from spinning up the Avi service engine to making sure that the availability zones are handled so you deploy multiple instances for HA uh, to connect into the network to placing the virtual service to configuring the HA to making sure the analytics is in place to scaling out both the applications and the load balancers on demand. Completely automated. Well, don't believe me? Let's see that in action with a live demo. When I log into the Avi dashboard, the Avi console, first thing you see is the application dashboard. Each application has an associate health score. Whether the application performance is doing well, if there are any security concerns, any abnormalities, etc. It's a very different dashboard than your traditional load balancers where we're not showing you how many load balancers you're running or they're up or down. We're actually showing you how your apps are doing, which at the end of the day is what you care about. Let me now show you how Avi integrates in Azure and how easy for you to set up a load balancer for an application in, in Azure. The first thing I'm going to show you is uh, our cloud configuration. On Avi controller, I've configured multiple clouds that Avi controller interacts with. In this case, I have a couple of Azure environments. Let's focus on the Azure Cloud East in the US. And you notice that we have configured the Azure credentials for Avi controller to log into uh, to talk to the Azure APIs for spinning up the load balancer VMs or understand or programming the Azure networking, etc. And we've also selected uh, which region in, uh, in Azure environment that you're spinning up this in, what the VNet is, what the service engine network is, etc. And in this case, we're also using Azure DNS for publishing the DNS entries. This is the one-time configuration that you have to do so that the AVI controller can talk to Azure. After that's done, Let's now go through the workflow that you have to go through for spinning up a new virtual service. So let's go ahead and do that. The first question I have to answer is, which cloud do you want to spin up this application load balancer in? And I'm going to focus on the Azure in this case. Okay, let's give it a name. Let's call it a demo app. Let's make sure I can access it publicly so we can run some traffic on it. So automatically create a public IP. Let's make sure it's secure so we can figure SSL. Let's pick a network for um, Avi controller to pick the uh, the IP address from for the VIP, so automatic IPAM. Let's it automatically also publishes to the Azure DNS. Done. Let's add the backend servers that you want to load balance. Uh, instead of manually adding it by IP address, you can do it with scale sets. Avi controller also talks to Azure and figures out what are the scale sets available um, for this uh, tenant and for this user. You can see that there is one scale set that's configured. We click on that and it automatically picks up the set of VMs that are part of the scale set. And if you add more VMs or remove VMs from the scale set, Avi is automatically, automatically going to um, add or remove those VMs from your environment. And in fact, Avi can auto scale 
application scale sets based on CPU memory, uh, connections per second, throughput, etc., by talking directly to Azure and adding or removing servers from this scale set. Anyway, so that is it. Single screen, you press save. Now, the magic is happening in the background. What's happening is Avi controller decides, do I have enough load balancers, enough service engines in this VNet for me to deploy this uh, new application on? If not, it calls the Azure APIs and spins up new Azure VMs. Okay. Then it uh, configures the VNix of that Azure VM in the right network, both the front end and the back end. It allocates the IP address for the VIP, for the private IP and the public IP. It does all of this network programming, takes a couple of minutes, then downloads the virtual service policies that we configured in terms of the SSL certificate or any other TCP or HTTP profile. And in a couple of minutes, it's ready to receive traffic. As you can see here at this point, the AVI controller is going ahead and programming the network. It has already picked, figured out which service engine it's going to use for this load balancer. It has already allocated the floating IP address as well as the private IP address. It has already um, decided, uh, it has already published the, uh, the, uh, the application name in the Azure DNS. Uh, it has configured all the TCP, HTTP, and SSL profiles for this virtual service. So as soon as the network programming is done, the VIP will be ready and you can, you can run the traffic. All right, and there you go. The application is ready. The load balancer instance is ready, that is. It's ready to receive traffic. So let's pick the IP address and run some traffic on it. So I'll put HTTPS. There you go. We, in, in, in a couple of minutes, we configured a VIP or a virtual service on AVI controller. AVI controller took care of everything in terms of spinning up a load balancer, programming the network, uh, configuring the policies, and within minutes, I'm able to run traffic. Let's actually see this traffic on the AVI console. And we go to the log screen, and there you go. The traffic that we just ran are, is visible here in the individual transaction logs. If I open up one of them, let's open up this one. This shows that I'm running on, I'm, I'm coming from this IP address in port. I'm in the US. I'm running on my Mac OS with a Chrome browser with a, a, a TLS 1.2. And I don't have perfect forward secrecy configured. It also calls that out. It took me 77 milliseconds to go from my browser to the load balancer in Azure. Uh, this was the uh, uh, VIP IP and port. This was a SNAT IP and port for the backend connection. Uh, it took two milliseconds to go between the Azure instance of Avi load balancer to the backend server. It took less than one millisecond for the server to respond, and it took 19 milliseconds for the data to go back with the end-to-end -end transaction latency for this specific transaction, which was a specific image uh, was 97 milliseconds. We can provide detailed analytics for every transaction. Okay, that was the Azure demo. So today in this video, what you saw was that Avi is an enterprise-grade load balancer that provides cloud-native automation, flexibility, and scalability in Azure. If you need more information, please check out avinetworks.com.